Uh, good evening to the Brookfield Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, December 10th, 2019. Would you like to rise and join me in saluting the flag? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have some warrants to ratify. We have, a, uh, I'd like a motion to uh, ratify them. Uh, an expense warrant for December 3rd, 2019 for $41,738.93. We would like to ratify a payroll warrant on for December 4th, uh, 2019 for $161,403.44. You have that motion. Second. Uh, any questions? All approved? Aye. Aye. All right. Now we have an announcement. Um, a reminder that a winter parking ban is in effect through April 1st from the hours of 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. There shall be no parking on any streets. Also, snow or ice removal from driveways, sidewalks, or private ways shall not be plowed, shoveled, or blown from any public way into the street or a roadway. And then we have, I'd like to acknowledge um, minutes and reports from the Conservation Committee from 10-15-19, Personnel Committee from 10-30-19, Brookfield Fire Department Monthly Report November 2019, Brookfield Emergency Squad Monthly Report from November 2019, and the Grant Writers Report for November 2019. And we have a couple anniversaries here on the fire department. We have Captain David Martell, who's been with us for 30 years, and emergency squad Terry Anderson, who's been with us for 26 years. So I would like to congratulate the two of them and hope that they're with us for quite a few years yet. And a motion, and, oops, pardon, a motion to accept the minutes and thank reports. You. Second. All right, and then before we have, I had an announcement here. Um, mm -hmm. Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Toledo today announced 920,000 in grants awarded to 174 Massachusetts fire departments for gear and equipment that will reduce firefighters' exposure to cancer-causing chemicals on the job. And our fire department got one. The we are receiving 2,500. $40 out of that. So we want to congratulate. I don't know if Peter wrote that to get the grant or if it was Kathy. It was from the state. It was that from was the, the state. From the state, yeah. Okay. So I think we need to go back to acknowledge and accept the reports. Okay, I would but, like, okay, I'm sorry. I'd like to make, make a motion oh, to approve. We had, we had a motion, motion a second. Okay, all in favor? Oh, aye. Aye. There you okay. go. All right. Our next, our first thing here on our agenda was with my agenda sheet, Karen. Did I, oh, no, it was right there. Was, okay. Did I? I had it right here with me. Did it get flipped? Yes, no, you had it because you had, I just switched it. Okay, here, I'll use this one. Dated. We can vote for it. Go for it. Okay, our first on the agenda was, um, we're supposed to have a joint meeting with the CIPC and the advisory board, and I only see a few of the advisory board members here. And then, the, then um, that was the first one that's calling. And then the second one is the Board of Selectmen, Advisory Board, CIPC, and Financial Discussion. So if we want to start, we can have uh, Laurie, our town up. Linda, Steve what? is running late, and he'll be here in five to 10 minutes. Could we? Bring up something else? Could, could, could we cover other items on the agenda? Sure. Okay. And save these two when Steve arrives? So yeah, all right, off. that's what we'll do. Thank you. All right. We have next, we will bring up, we'll take these out of order. Can I have yep. a motion? Motion to take things out of order. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have to sign um, a CMRPC documents. We have uh, some invoices. It's invoice number nine, five, and two changes and orders of the certificate of substantial completion. Motion, motion to, to sign. authorize the chairman to sign. Second. So all of, all oh, three of us. All, all of us have to sign. So Some motion. of them require all the signatures, but also there's both sides of the paper, so you have to really look at it. Okay, I'll look at it when we do it. Motion to board to sign. 
second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to go take that some more agendas while you guys are doing that. Okay. Okay. Ten. Let's see, you can bring any more here. I'm not take that all. Did I borrow your pen? Oh, sure. Actually, grab mine. She gave me a red one, but I went for black. Usually I'm coming straight from work and I still have my bag okay. with me. Oh my like, yeah. god. I think there are three signatures, Beth. Yeah, there's three. Three. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now we have uh, the next on our agenda. We have wage authorizations. We have one. I'll read them all, and then we can prove them. 
Uh, these came from the highway department. It's for employee to be hired for emergency operator, uh, Richard Chafee, at the rate of $19.86. The next one is for uh, Michael Latile Tao, and uh, that's another emergency operator at the same rate. And we have one also for Bruce Clark. And the next one here is Alex Jagger. Motion to sign or approve. Second. Any questions on it? Uh, the only question that I have, I know a number of those gentlemen have been emergency operators in the past. Um, my understanding, unless it was like a, and perhaps it's a change in, in rate, um, that somebody who's, who's hired as an emergency operator, unless we officially terminate their employment well these since are, are they're, since they're seasonal no, and on call three of these are bruce is the only one that's been out okay. all the other ones these are new people okay these they're new people okay Next thing on the agenda here is to set meeting dates. Oh, yeah. Okay. In um, January, what we would do, we would probably, we have one here that we would be scheduled to have, but that's on New Year's Eve, so we don't want that. Don't so we so. thought we'd start off and kind of keep in track with Laurie when she does the uh, the warrants. So. I'd like, um, I'll, I'll read them all off and then I'll ask for a motion to approve them. Mm -hmm. January uh, 14th of 2020. Uh, what, so, uh, oh, because of the warrants, you're going yeah. to the 14th. Yeah. Okay, all right, I get, I get it. You're meeting on the 17th, okay. so you actually go three yeah. weeks without a meeting yeah. to stay on that schedule and not meet New Year's Eve yeah. if you need to obviously call a meeting. We will. Okay. So it'll be the 14th and the 28th. In February, it would be February 11th and the 25th. March would be the 10th and the 24th. In April, it would be the 7th and the 21st. I would like a motion to accept these dates for meetings. Motion to accept. Second. Any questions with any of them? All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 wanted to read this did we no because that's no, that's that's in the things under other are only if the topics come up okay there, there's nothing under other actually that's all just in case any of those topics comes up i had the documents handy for you all right, all right. And, okay in correspondence 
which is next, we have some more China charter communication lineups. It says Spectrum is making its customers aware that on December 30th, 2019, that um, channels 334 and 845 and channel 348 and 761 and 323 and 769, which are located on the SPP tier, will be, um, they, they will be eliminated. They won't be available on the lineup anymore. And then to view the current <coughs> channel lineup, you can visit uh, spectrum.com slash channels, or if you have any questions, you can call John Maha at 774 two four three nine seven three five and then here we had a couple of uh, letters of appreciation from the O'Connells from Trudy and O'Connell and Peter O'Connell on um, this was one about on uh, Ryan how well he did you know with all the work down there on the Hayden Hyde and Kimball Street and how cooperative he was with uh, working with the contractor and Andrew Lowe so this could even be something we could use on Friday also. Yep. Karen. Yes, I already have it. Yes, oh, Friday you do? Friday. Okay, and this is another one, Pete. This is another one also from the O'Connells. They wanted to express their appreciation. Work well done by the Selectman Highway and the previous highway superintendent, Herb Chafee and Cindy Thompson, and the CBG Advisory Committee and Andrew Lowe at Central Mass for securing the community development fund and the reconstruction. Thank well you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Okay. So do we right. still want, we're going to wait for Steve? I, no. I think we can get started. Right? He's supposed to be here any minute based on what he told me, so I don't think we, I don't think we should ask other people to wait for the schedule. Okay, so I, we'll, I do have a thought. What's your thought? Uh, the thought is that we, there's some several emails going around as far as potentials for earmarks and whatnot. Yes. And so maybe this might be a good time to brainstorm those ideas as to what there might be. So if and when an earmark were possible, mm -hmm. that at least we'd be in concert with one another as far as what a, a project or two might look like um, as far as spending that money mm -hmm. if we were able to uh, get a hold of some. Yeah. So since we're here, what projects do we have that we would think would qualify for that sort of thing if the monies were available. I have some ideas. My idea is that we have struggled. Kathy has struggled to find six ways to Sunday to find funds to improve the South Palm Beach. One of the next improvements to that South Palm Beach is access where the path pathway one is not uh, ADA compliant anyway but it's also washed away in, a, in a, a portion of it. Where the state owns the, the land and we can't get grants because they own the, the land, this would end that not only does Brookfield use the beach, but other towns use the beach. I think it would qualify because of that as well, yeah. as far as a, a way to at least fund um, improved access to the beach. So that was my thought, as far as something that would be unique um, and kind of off the off the radar and if we could put it back on the radar that would be good yes it would be yeah, i know that's not technically part of our capital plan but it's something that needs to happen in town that we don't want to have it be a burden mm -hmm. since it's not our property right. and i think it would give the committee that's trying to establish the beach uh, a good leg up to be able to feel successful if we were able to do something mm -hmm. like that I think, it, I think it would be good if we had two to three projects because yep. you never know you know they're, they're, they're saying oh if you've got three or four projects here and here is some money available in these plots if they match up you know and sometimes you get funded for something yeah. just because it's yeah. a, an alignment uh, yeah an alignment you know? yeah. Yeah. and I guess uh, Karen I have not heard back he was supposed to call me back yesterday I was going to follow up tomorrow if I don't hear from him. He said the him is Ann Goldie's. Uh, yes, Ann Goldie's aide, Lucas, who comes here. He's going to speak to the chief of staff in Boston and try to find out what their priorities are for this mm -hmm. year to kind of give us an idea of something that would be a good match. So as soon as I get the information, I'll pass it along to folks. I would think Kelvin Campground bought 
to be oh, a, oh, yes. a good match, That's but I don't know where we are on the planning. In other words, one of the, we talked about this in capital planning today, and uh, at one point, I think uh, the archaeology, the next steps in archaeology, uh, the access road uh, location mm -hmm. and construction, those were two that I recall uh, yeah. having been on the list. So where we are with, with Tobin is we have the remaining three buildings to, to be demolished. When the, uh, the, the state was going through our application, they were concerned about the ownership of the beachfront area, the roller <coughs> rink area, that they didn't have what they thought proper paperwork. Al is actually working on that paperwork to make sure that they have the adequate information that they need to, in fact, allow us to take the third building down. With that, you're correct, Peter, as far as the other ideas. We may, in fact, need an archaeologist to come in even with what we're about to do, but nobody said that, that yet, so uh, we should be okay there. Once the roller rink is down and gone, one of the things, because of the um, elevations between the beach and the, the uh, street level, is so high, there will be a need for some sort of uh, stairway or rampway or something like that as well. So the, the, there are several things that are there. Um, again, it, it, it had been my priority that we take the remaining buildings down and then take a deep breath and then decide what those next three or four th things that we might want to do. We did put in the grant application with um, the Attorney General's office the signage so that we'd have appropriate signage at each of the entranceways. So should we get that grant, we'd have signage be one step ahead that way. So yes, I, I would vote totally that Tobin and, and next projects on Tobin be uh, a focus as well. And partly our problem is we need to get a little farther ahead with planning and, and estimates of, of costs of projects. Because uh, we, we, we can't put anything into the state for an air market unless we've got pretty firm figures, I would think. So if these were two, thought, two thoughts moving forward, I'd certainly um, address at least the uh, the ADA compliant rampway at the beach to ask Ryan what his estimate might be for that. That would be a way to at least get a number around that. As far as Tobin, I, again, I don't know what that next step ought to be. We probably ought to call a meeting just related to Tobin to decide what mm -hmm. we what we think the, the appropriate thing is. Maybe I could take that as an action for in January to to schedule a meeting. Is a logical ask. Yeah, it's a logical ask. Mm -hmm. We know it's coming up. It's been on our radar. We've asked for a new fire engine and we get the funding for it. Uh, I don't know whether a used fire engine would mm -hmm. be an eligible fire or not. Mm -hmm. and finally, it seems like uh, renovating the great room. I'm sorry? Renovating the great room upstairs. The great, yes. No, we've been told that. Uh, the, the, Stairlift has not been approved. Is that correct? Mm. I don't know. I that. thought it's news to yeah. 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 Could well, we have Kathy reported Kathy Rock has reported she, she today that the, the, oh, she the, the uh, architectural access board had oh, they have to come in and look at to make sure we can use it? They have Are said we, that, that we can? they will not approve it as uh ADA compliant. Mm. Uh, to satisfy mm. the architectural access board. We had asked them for a, a permit, a, a variance, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if the right word, uh, to install the chairlift to meet on a temporary basis uh, the ADA uh, access required to be able to use the upstairs room. And apparently that was denied. Mm. But you haven't received word? No, we haven't no. received anything. No, we had not gotten yet. a formal notification no. about that. But since I sat in on the CBDG planning uh, meeting the other day, that might just be the nut to break the breakthrough on the elevator. There might be money, CBDG related monies now, especially if we've been stopped on the other end. So, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good mm. list. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, there may be other projects that others would, mm -hmm. for example, I don't know where we are on the property. Uh, 
in terms of doing the, uh, the, the environmental connection or whether the, the solar um, port for the police station uh, might also be in line with the state's uh, energy, uh, alternative energy uh, goals. I, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, but we would, somebody would need to have a conversation yeah. about what's, what's a good strategy yeah. on this. This is probably too, many, too big a list. Yeah. Well, this is something I, I feel like Clarence has said we should get together, you know, after the first of the year and do some brainstorming and figure just what is most, most important and get a list going. Yeah. It's a good thing to yeah. Yeah. Well, it, and it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt in those to have more than a few, though, because yeah. I, it feels like having, having the ask out there is what got communities what yeah. they were looking for the last time that mm -hmm. this went out. So. Um, the key is just having some solid number around yes. it. So if, if uh, Ryan can give us some, some good numbers on the, the, on ramp, the, anyway. On the ramp anyway. Yeah. And I know Peter's got some numbers on the fire engine for use because I know he monitors the market on a regular basis to see what's out yeah. there because yeah. secondary market is really kind of very hit or miss as to what's available and what, you know, whether or not it meets mm -hmm. the, the very specific criteria that we have for the community. Um, and then it's it, this is yeah usually I mean usually Bill's pretty proactive in letting us know what's going on with the communication uh, from the town hall improvement committee but Al may have been closer to it and um, it may be that there's still some negotiating negotiations going on regarding the chairlift so yeah these are all on our list oh yeah. Uh, So we, we need Kathy to be part yeah, of what we're Kathy, talking about. Yeah, yeah sure. So, so setting up a January meeting would be a good thing. I think, I think it would. Another thing I would like to bring up tonight, I have had quite a few people um, questioning who gave permission to the Recreation Committee to put a skate, skating rink over on the Common. And the first thing I saw it was on Facebook over the weekend, and I said <laughs> none of us gave permission. So what I had Karen do to yesterday I think she called our insurance and he said um, we don't if it would be a liability to the town and he said no he said what we would do would put a sign up there would say skate at your own risk right and and I, I think that's that what Sturbridge does yeah. as well yeah but I mean but still they should have notified us I knew they were know. they were talking yeah they just weren't but they talking just about us. no they weren't they just went ahead and did it so <laughs> ask for permission what is it <laughs> ask for forgiveness because instead of permission in my experience um, when people watch do something on the common those requests have typically typically gone to the cultural council and so that may they may have gone to the cultural council and they did done that ask. But still, they, maybe they should have notified the Board of Selectmen so we would have known because there's been I'm so many people that, calling and asking every time I see somebody, they said, who gave them permission? I'm, I'm not saying that that was right or wrong. I'm just yeah. saying that's been the practice. And if it may be helpful if you communicated to a broader audience what might have to come to the Selectmen or help people understand who should be asked if they don't answer. Okay, Jean Lowe did come. Uh -huh. Jean Lowe did come she? from the Cultural Council the other day, and she talked about the skating rink. She said there were some things that she wished they had done differently, and and I'm not sure if she she didn't oversee the project either. I'm not sure if they did. I'm sure they probably got permission. Yeah. She didn't state one way or the other, but I know she said that her personally, she wasn't necessarily speaking to the committee, but. I guess they had to move some benches to put it in. Right. And she was wishing things were done a little bit differently. Yeah. Lars? To add on. So I, I guess a question and also a statement. Um, so I do know that the rec department did go to the cultural council. Oh, they did. Because yeah. they asked them for the money for yeah. it as well, which the cultural council had planned it on. Planned on giving them to pay for the skating rink. Mm -hmm. Currently, the skating rink is up there unpaid. Ooh. I will not pay the bill for the skating rink because no one from the rec department will get back to me. Because there is, I have an issue with the rec department because the bills are coming in saying rec, Brookfield Rec Department. However, they're asking me to cut checks to them to pay a whole to Brookfield Resorts. And I have asked 
multiple people from the rent department, where their bank account is, why am I cutting checks to another agency, and why are they billing Brookfield's rec department here, when I already have vendors contacting me saying that they have, the rec department has unpaid bills that I've never heard of. So I have not paid for the skating rink. So we're all clear that skating rink is up there unpaid. And I will not be paying for it because no one will get back to me. So that is a, a whole other issue that I don't know if there's clarification somewhere as to how they're operating. We have had problems in the past. I know we've had to call them uh, on these bills. We've called the chairman, and he's never got back. Right, Karen? Oh, no. we've had Jeff, quite Jeff, 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 gets, Jeff, gets, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff gets back, you generally, if you call him about a specific thing. Well, so I really, he if wasn't. You, if you want me to reach out to him, if you can. He's emailed twice over yeah. the last two weeks, and generally he'll get back to me. I haven't heard of keep about that, that's that's not typical right that, that's not typical so could you send me the information that you have the questions on and I'll reach out but to we them. have had Bethel pro we had problems last year also with the rec right. Right. It's, it's I think it's a seasonal thing it's kind of like there are periods during the during the year where I'm impossible to get in touch with Jeff is, has but some periods like that as well. uh, no understood well. and, it, and it may be it may be a case of, of they paid for it out of the they probably paid for it out of the funds that they had collected that that is that the fund that they did get authorized to set up a couple years back yeah, and yeah. they're and they're looking at it as a reimbursement of expenses that they normally would have billed back to the town directly but it seems odd given the fact that the vendor you're saying that the vendor hasn't the been paid either from the bill from the ice rink company mm -hmm. the Brookfield rec department then they gave that bill to the cultural council and asked them to pay for it so the Cultural Council gave me the bill on a voucher and told me to cut the check to Brookfield Youth Sports. But because they're not running a revolving account through the town, I can't cut them a check. Yeah, so, right, so, 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 we just need to get their, the their account had mm -hmm. been approved in under past administrations, yeah. past accountants. So we, we need to have that conversation as well as yeah. a part yeah. of this because Youth Sports is an entity that this board years ago whether we approved it formally or informally, it's been how they've been running. And I think it has it, to be. It would be. It has uh, to be formally. Yes, I think it, it has would to sound be. like yeah. there needs For to me. be right. needs to be Understood. a conversation. Yeah. yeah. And a procedure. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take it as an action though to reach out to Jeff and try okay. to get I'll get at least the can, if you can forward me the the details in the yeah. email and I'll play phone tag with him. Perfect. Well, we just After so fact, so you so. Would, you would normally have to get permission, right? Well, and and the, I don't know that we were able to find the vote, but I remember that the conversation occurred, and and it was at the time, you know, it's with it is within at the time they had brought some materials that showed it was within the confines of Mass General Law for them to set that up and run it independently. You um, mean the, the rink or this? The, or the, no, the, 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 oh, account. the account they have, because I know the account's not here with the town. I don't no, know. it's not. No, no it's, it's not. not. Um, so, but what's what's key, it sounds like, is for Lori to understand at least where the account is and what rules they're operating it under so that she has that same information that was provided the first time, mm -hmm. which is not currently residing with the accounts office. So. Right. All I'm asking about is you want to make sure the precedent isn't set and anybody can just use it. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Peter. They shouldn't be able to be setting up accounts in all different places for their monies. No, he's talking about the use of the green. Use of the the oh, the use of the common. Doesn't, doesn't any use of the common require your permission? It re, the last time I researched yeah. it, it, it. Well, it's not as though the Cultural Council has the whole use in of the, uh, I know with the gazebo, when I, you know, I'm a justice of the peace, and when I used to do weddings, I used to always have to ask them for permission to use the gazebo, but I don't think we have to ask them for permission to use the common. The last time I researched this thing, yeah. it was that the Bannister Committee, which doesn't exist, yeah, we, yeah. had the yay or nay as far as the use of the common. I would say, and I think what we said at that time was, because that committee did not exist, that it came back to yeah. the Board of Selectmen. But I think what we've allowed yeah. more than anything else is that the Cultural can Council, beyond the gazebo, has managed affairs over there. Yeah. We've done a good, nice job. 
and so I think it may be important that we clarify um, how we should go forward. So that's another. We should probably get together with them also. Yep. Maybe in our January 7th, what is it, 14th or the, well, probably the 28th, we probably ought to have a, yeah. a conversation and we'll invite them here to have a chat. Sure, you get that down. down yeah. Okay, so is that all of now? Steve is here Steve so we can here. continue on with our meeting. We waited for you. <laughs> we had some good fruitful conversation. Yeah. I was going to say, we, we certainly did. had enough. Uh... Yeah. Okay, Laurie, would you like to come up and give... And as you've noticed, and I passed around, we had a few copies uh, from uh, Sarah Hunter, who we had hired to go into the, you know, the treasurer's office and start, you know, reconciling and um, accomplish different things that she has been doing. She's been taking care of like uh, cash books. She's been setting up uh, balances, and she's been doing all kind of work in there, and she's accomplished quite a bit. And maybe Laurie can explain some of it. Sure. Um, so I have spoken with Sarah multiple times since she started. Um, she's made quite a bit of progress in the treasurer's office. She's gone through and organized all of the files in the office. They've started scanning everything. That way the files are able to be shared between um, her and I as well as her two employees. Um, they've went through and organized each month for fiscal year 19, made sure that all of the folders are accounted for. Um, as of Saturday, when I spoke to her, um, she sent me over their cash book for all of July. Um, they were not able to use anything uh, from the former treasurer um, because it, it just didn't match. It had a wrong starting balance, it wasn't, um, effectively a cash book. Mm -hmm. um, she completed her cash book for July, uh, fiscal year 19. She is confident in her numbers. Um, I have it here. I haven't had time yet to balance my numbers to her. That's what I'm planning on doing tomorrow. Um, so I'm hoping that we are at least in the same ballpark and it will be a good starting point for us. Um, she also spent some time on Friday in the office working with Holly, um, training her on how to use Vadar. I got them both set up with their own users so that way we're not, no one is sharing accounts um, because this is the last thing we want to be doing. She trained Holly on how to enter all the turnovers in Vadar. I spent time with Holly when I came in on Wednesday last week and showed her how to print checks. Um, so she's, Holly should be fine moving forward for doing everything for fiscal year 20 mm -hmm. um, and Sarah's confident that she'll be able to do fiscal year 20 entering receipts on her own um, and we seem to be moving at a good pace right now um, we've yet to be in the office at the same time but we are at least communicating we are yes and yeah I've been, I've been communicating with her too she sends me the updates I was yeah. up on Friday also yeah she works odd hours so I mean she calls me at home on Saturdays and it, which is perfectly fine. Um, so she's made good progress um, as far as what we've been doing in accounting. Um, I did run into some issues within the treasurer's office when I went in with Holly on Wednesday. I addressed those with Holly. Um, they were from the former treasurer. Holly was going to bring them up with Sarah. Um, I don't want to be too hands on in that office. Um, there were issues with old bank accounts. Um, old checkbooks still being in the possession of that office that I had asked to be shredded um, when I got here in May. Um, I'm going to double check and check in with both of them, with Sarah and Holly, to make sure that's been handled. Um, they shouldn't be any checks in the building other than the checks that get printed out of ADAR. So that should be all set. Um, as of today, I have the fiscal year 19 receivables, which is the balancing between the collector and the accountant are like 98% done and everything is balancing out. Um, so the only differences that we're showing are a couple um, payments that the collector got in June and I got in July of fiscal year 20, which is completely normal. Um, an issue we identified is that the way that the senior work off is being accounted for is incorrect. Um, so that I addressed with Al today and we're gonna try to fix it 
if we can really quickly this month, uh, it might not be possible because um, realistically senior work off should be put through the payroll um, on your last payroll warrant in December. Um, it's never been done that way here. Um, so there'll be a lot of questions I'm assuming from your senior workers um, as well as um, probably a few issues when they get their W-2, which they haven't gotten in a few years, unfortunately. So we're gonna address that. It may not be possible to get it done for this year. If not, we're gonna have to correct it next year. Um, we will not back One more pay procedure. anyone. Yeah. One exactly. more procedure. Yes. Thank you. Um, so that's the cash we got. Um, I spent time working over the phone with Al last week. We have the tax rate pretty much set. Um, it took some time getting all the revenues posted for fiscal year 19. I am confident that we caught 98, 99% of the revenues. There may be one or two mm -hmm. things that are misposted, not posted. Um, in the end, I had to finish them myself because the treasurer did not complete them before she left. Um, Sarah had just came in and wasn't able to do them. I think we accounted for everything. We, um, fiscal year 18, stabilization, as well as your trust interest was never posted. There's nothing we can do about that now because your schedule A is already done. However, it's all posted for fiscal year 19 and accounted for it in the recap. Um, we were able to cover all of the fiscal year 19 deficits in the recap um, and still come in with a lower tax rate. Um, so next year should be looking really good because we won't have any deficits and um, we'll have an even better tax rate. So the perk to that is you will still have a deduction when I submit your balance sheet for fiscal year 19. They will still deduct from your free cash the deficit um, however, you will not have to go to town meeting in June and again from your free cash cover that deficit. It's covered on the recap, so it's just a one-time hit from your free cash uh, rather than two. Um, we came in at an overall deficit of about $93,000. The fiscal one, fiscal year 21 budget is what I'm working on now. I've identified quite a few accounts that need to be corrected when we do the budget for next year. The biggest one being snow and ice. Um, per the state accounting structure, the UMIS accounting structure, you cannot just have one snow and ice account. It can't be dumped in one account. So you have to break out your payroll and your expenses separately. Um, so I will be working with advisory as well as highway to determine how much they think they spend on payroll and how much they think they spend on expenses because everything will have to be broken. Highway has that. Yeah. They have that going back like and we five have or that six years probably. As well, I can break out their payroll from that. So yeah. there'll be a lot of changes when we do the budget for this year. Okay. Um, just because there's a lot of accounts where we've been paying payroll out of expense accounts and expenses out of payroll, um, which can't happen. Um, Quick question, how, how long has that um, kind of accounting rule under UMIS been in place regarding so every, not, it, a, not having a single snow and ice account? So it's ever since the UMIS accounting structure came into effect. It's like a decade ago, isn't it? Yeah, so it would have been effect for you from whenever you switched from stat accounting to UMIS, which I'd have to look back in your books to see when you switched. So it would be whenever you switch from like a two digit in the front, mm -hmm. like an 01 or a 10, to these 001s, um, if I had to guess, probably like six years, because I know I've gone back that far in your books. Um, a lot of accountants just don't switch them, they leave them. No one ever really enforces it, they just give you a, well, you should have done it this way on your Schedule A. I mean, the auditor is the one that's gonna write you up for not having it and more or less they write me up because I'm the one who's handling the books. Um, so it's an easy split. We're just gonna split them all up in the budget. Um, as far as funding the audit, um, I found two accounts that have currently no use. Um, I don't know that they'll have any use this year. One of them will definitely have no use because it was a double fund. Um, 
So the grant writer's position was always funded out of the consultant expenses account. Um, when we did the budget for last year for fiscal year 20, we actually funded a position called grant writer payroll, mm -hmm. but never removed the consultant expenses account, which is $10,000. So there's a $10,000 budget in that, and there's also the computer acquisition budget of $5,000. Effectively, if the grant comes through that we're hoping for the computers, um, we wouldn't need the computer acquisition budget, so that would be about $15,000. Um, there is still money in the reserve fund uh, of $15,000. However, you're still looking at a shortfall in the accounting budget, which you were aware of, um, to fund the rest mm -hmm. of the PVPC contract for this yeah. year, um, and potentially some in the treasurers, which we may come in right around what we need for the treasurer's budget for this year. Um, and then the other question you could pose to the highway department is if the tree warden expense budget is being funded under them because they are currently the ones spending the money because there doesn't appear to be a tree warden. Right, I think we actually Brian. officially, we appointed it, Brian as yes. tree warden. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he's a, our right. highway superintendent is, is also so appointed So he has a quite a bit warden. of money um, that, potentially could be used as well. We have, we have quite a bit of trees Please that need to come <laughs> down. He may not even be aware of the amount of money that he still has left in that account. Yeah. Because yeah. because I think there were some questions over how much got funded where yep. regarding trees. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and we definitely, some of that is definitely needs to just stay put right. where it's at mm -hmm. for what it needs to get spent on. So realistically, those are the only accounts I can come up with that could potentially be used towards funding the audit right now. Other than reserve, potentially? Well, other than the reserve, which we will need. There's 15 left in the reserve. We're going to need at least 10 to fund the remaining portion of the accounting budget. Um, so you're looking at about five. Didn't Andrew Lowe say something, Karen? Andrew Lowe said that he thought that there was some... Federal. some that's for a federal. There's money in the CDBG contract, right. uh, but it's for a federal audit, and that's if we get oh. federally audited, oh, which we good. most likely will. Um, you are federally audited if you hit a threshold of receiving a certain amount of grant money in one um, calendar year. And you said we might make that. We most likely will. Okay. Um, a federal audit is different than having just a regular audit. Yeah. But they, um, we do have money to cover that federal audit. But we don't have the money to cover like five years of an audit. We don't have money to cover um, right now any audit. And didn't you tell me the other day you estimated it might cost us about forty thousand dollars for a full five-year audit? Yeah. Yes, one year is generally around fifteen thousand. Um, other than that, everything's going smoothly. Um, as soon as I start balancing with Sarah, we should be able to move fiscal year 19 right along. Fiscal year 18 is fully closed in VADAR um, and on the books, um, and everything went smooth. I'm going to start um, pulling apart your accounting structure for fiscal year 20, um, so that way there's no more issues. Um, I started passing out new accounts to people that needed them. We received our grant for the fire department, so he got his new account. Um, for that, and that's about it. Thank you. Do you have any idea what we spent here today on sort of like the treasurer, you know, uh, the, the treasurer plus the consultant? Oh, you mean the previous one? Correct. Yeah, okay. Um, we have spent without the last payroll that was just approved, which I believe was about $1,100, we've spent $18,695 on the treasurer. And on the treasurer's consultant, we had already spent $6,697, and that is without the last payroll. You estimate that being on 1100 um, the treasurer, I believe, was 1100 and I believe the consultant was about 600 Thank you. You're welcome. So, so just so we're all clear, mm -hmm. it's that the advisory board is now able to move forward with the 21 yeah. activities mm -hmm. and that you have a good relationship with the accountant 
as to moving that effort forward. Yes. Yes. And we have a good understanding of all the accounts that we need to have mm -hmm. delineated and the procedures that relate to those accounts. Yep. So I met with um, Tom and Jeff about two weeks ago, and I have their budget from last year in Excel. I'm going to go through and add lines where they need to be added. I am putting together the um, budget request packet for them, and then they are going to, um, we're going to meet and they're going to roll it out as they see fit. So and the department heads are clear as to who's got what responsibilities and they're prepared or preparing we to support? We have not gotten that far yet. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so we have, uh, the, the uh, advisory has our next meeting this coming Thursday mm -hmm. night. And the agenda is the fiscal year 21 budget, where we had, you know, we, we, we've had ongoing meetings with, for instance, the task Club, Unit 61, uh, the library, so it's, it, we have not, you know, we have not been idle, and we have not just been, you know, mm. you know uh, lost in, in, in you know, the, the problems we've had here. We're, we're moving along, and I know that Tom and Jeff is a little subcommittee glory to get things on track and uh, and yes that's our that's our agenda I, I think one recommendation I would have for this year is that once you have like the plan together for ex exactly what the account structure needs to look like and and in essence what lines the department head should be asking to get funded and what those definitions are that we actually do during their work day and I, I know periodically members of your committee have been available like during work hours is if we could hold a meeting with the department heads to give them clear communication of structure timeline expectations of detail of submission for the purposes of the review by advisory um, we could piggyback you know the their capital requests and what the expectation is about level of detail timing of the communication for the capital improvement committee and and do that as an open kind of question and answer session so that there's like clear communication in what we've had in the past and stuff getting thrown in their box and saying hey get it back to me by x date so mm -hmm. that was our plan yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's really that's been the plan two years running but uh, right you know um I, I, it, would it, know, would I it work to put a, 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 a pin in the sand of a day that you think that you'd be available? Because I know sometimes, a lot, of, a lot of times what happens, you know, in my workplace is if you, if you put a date on the calendar, then it actually happens, versus if we say it, it needs to happen, then it just doesn't happen. So, along that line, you might as well ask this now, because, of course, um, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, board of selectmen are the, the, the managers and, and uh, you are the body that, that any of the uh, department heads are accountable to. Um, um, if, if, we're, if, 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 if we're to pick a date, mm -hmm. put the pin in the sand, if you will, and that sort of thing, we would have your support saying, okay, you know, this is a mandatory meeting. Short of, a, short of a foot of snow, yes. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> We so, might want to schedule uh, a snow day. In other words, that, that's been our, our ongoing, I shouldn't say an ongoing issue. We, we were thinking it could be in the evening. That doesn't work yeah. out. We're ready to go with something during the day. And just as long as, as it's sort of a mandatory must be, and um, it's not a whipping whip session. This is a you know, information, information process. Yeah. That's, what I think. that's the idea. And Steve, I don't know if anybody has come to you yet. Uh, to talk about budgets but I had uh, something came from the emergency squad and they wanted to know if uh, they should base their budgets on the new figures that the personnel board got from the Collins Center when we got the new um, rate the grade and the rate schedule sure. but that has to be approved by town meeting first before we can even use that yeah, we're I, why would that have to be approved by town meeting before we can because use that? Because that's in the personnel bylaws. And any changes that we're doing, it has to be approved. To the, to well, the structure. But to the, to, so the, the... It's always been approved, Beth. Oh, the, the, the wage chart's not part of the bylaw. 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is part of the bylaw. Yeah, it's in the bylaw. Well, the definition of the grades is in the bylaw, but the table that provides the funding level for each one of those grades is not is not actually physically in the bylaw. Well, I don't think we no, it's in. As far as I know, it's it's still in there, and we have, and we still haven't settled yet on that. So, before they can start using this to, you know, for their new budgets for FY21, it's all got to get approved. Yeah, but, but I think we need to handle it similar to what we've done with any salary transactions, and I think we're now talking two steps, which mm. I thought it was going to be one step, but if it has to be two steps, it's two steps. One, it's the addressing the bylaw and the change mm -hmm. to the bylaw based on the recommendation of Collins and the impact on salaries. Mm -hmm. And that we're going to do, there would be two Warren articles addressing both. So you would, you would ask the town to approve the, the bylaw change? Yeah, yes, because we're, we're, writing, change. we're writing up new. And you would have an amount of money uh, that it will cost the town yes. to implement. Yes. That's correct. Added mm -hmm. to the budgeted yes. uh, items that are in the line item budget. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. That yes. would be how I would I mean, think. that's how we've done it in the past, but uh, yeah. it's kind of awkward. But I, I think that that's where yeah. we're at. Maybe the next time we have a bylaw meeting, maybe we could have Laurie come in. We could maybe have it on Tuesday. Question? Yeah. Would all this, in order to do the budget thing, wouldn't we require that all the departments have all their employees have step in grade assigned so that they could then plug well, in? We have, well, we haven't have got that day. far yet, right? I, I, I understand we're not there yet, but I'm saying if we're going in that direction, in order to, un, to budget a proper amount of uh, money for the salary, if this change is, is approved by the floor, then in order to do the budgeting, all the depart all the personnel are subject to second grade are going to have to have a step in grade assigned. And so that's just I'm just and it wants to be my yeah. is two, to make sure it's yeah. not missed. Two steps. Yeah, two steps. First step, second grade identified on an article and the impact on the budget. Yes, that's on what a we second said, article. yeah. Or it would be an impact. So would you say two steps? Are you talking like the We'd have to do the step and grade and change the bylaws at the annual, say at the annual town meeting yeah. this time, and then the implementation would then have to be at a future meeting. I know. Same, so same so meeting. Same but meeting. In order to do step two, you have to anticipate step one so that you know the sap impact of the uplift on the wages of your So, so, the, so you could do a two column, um, a two column budget. You can do so if the step and grade passes on the floor you have one column that includes an increase mm -hmm. kind of like you do a board of selectmen budget fincom budget mm -hmm. you do one that includes a step and grade increase and one that includes just a standard two percent and that way they can vote on basically which budget I, they want i, I understand <laughs> that my, my point is is that for example we have a, an employee of the library here it's like in order for the library to do its budget this person would have to have a step and yep. grade assigned to them in order to know what their salary right. would be under that condition. So that's, I'm observing that that work is going to have to be done in order to prepare the budget. Yes. It's December. Right. A absolutely. I guess, I guess my one concern is, is, that it, the, is that the current step and wage schedule, while referenced in the bylaw, is not currently incorporated as physically part of the bylaw so i i don't know that changes to the numeric values within the step and wage schedule requires that the step and wage schedule go as an entity itself to town meeting which is what it sounds like we're saying see we've got to get all of this approved first we're going to send it all in most of the by see first of all we're trying to get the bylaw done up Right. And it has to go before we've got to send that into town council before we even get it approved at town meeting. And if you know if they have changes, then we have to make the changes. And then what we were going to do when we talked about you know the new pay schedule that we did get from the Collins Center, we were going to figure out what the impact would be on the town. Oh, and, and I and I agree we need to do an impact uh, assessment of what it is. What I'm saying though is that the changes to the personnel bylaw 
that are recommended by the Collins Center, that the, that the wage changes don't necessarily have a dependency of those bylaw changes going in front of town meeting. The, the, any wage and grade, any, any, in essence, wage changes associated with um, the Collins Center study can be handled through the, the Board of Selectmen and the Personnel Committee with an understanding that if it's not funded, we can't, we can't go there until we get the funding for those line items to adjust to those wages um, handled at town meeting. But, but we could absolutely come up with an updated, you know, wage schedule to go into place once we had the funding in place to support it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I two columns yeah. of Lord, so. Yeah, exactly. So well, I don't I think we need to be clear for sure that we don't have that wage scale in the bylaw. It used to be in the bylaw and it would have had to been changed and I don't think we've changed it. So maybe you'd be kind enough to just make sure of that. I'd uh, say it needs to yeah. be an agenda topic for the night the seventeenth. Yeah. Secondly, would a solution be you have a large special town meeting, non-financial, include an article to put before the town the change in the personal bylaws. Um, so we won't, we won't have no. It's no. We won't have time by then because we're still working on it. Because there's a lot of changes. Because we had town council was out here with us one day, and there's a lot of changes that still need to be done in it. So let's not talk March. Let's talk. Are we talking that we need a special, or do do we re rely on the annual? We I mean, you ha do you have time to do what you're trying to do by the we annual? We were talking about doing it by the annual, but I will talk. We were supposed to have had a meeting tomorrow, but it was canceled. So okay. we'll have to see if we can schedule a meeting next week, and then we'll have more on. And so let's <laughs> let's get a target mm -hmm. and see if whether it's special or not. Steve has a. For the purposes of why we pulling together this budget and working with everyone, um, back to timelines. Can we have a timeline? Linda, I, 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 I'm not sure if all this is falling on your lap or not, but you know, it sounds like personnel, it sounds like bylaws, all this other sort of thing. For when will this be done? When will we have our step in grade? When will we know? Well, bylaws? that's, well, when right. we meet again, I'll have some more answers for you. When, me. when we meet again, because we were supposed to be meeting tomorrow, and this yeah. was probably some of the questions that were going to be asked. Yeah, and answered. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. certainly so, what we would need yeah. to know, and also something that we will need sort of a hard date on in order yeah. to do our Okay, work. I'll see if we. So I'll see if I can schedule a meeting for next week, and then we'll talk about you know what our deadlines are, and then I'll get back to you. What is the message we give to uh, the direction we give to? department heads at this point regarding wages? Level well, probably, I would level fund. I would level fund them and then like, you know, if we are going to give them, you know, if we pass all of this and then we'll have like another column with the new one. Well, we, we'd have a I column think, that we yeah. could then adjust based on what we agree between mm -hmm. advisory and so. Right. You know, we, we, we've got that. I'm, I'm referring mm -hmm. to having specific dates that we, that we can operate with it. And, and I have a question before, I mean, and I, I understand that the two of you both are of the opinion that we level fund in terms of the employee salaries, but what was our headspace last year from our levy limit? So what was... 400000 Okay. So we were $400,000 yes. under our levy limit. $400,000-ish under our levy With limit. With the tax rate going down. With the tax rate going down. So so why wouldn't we at least fund it like a 2% or 2.5% oh. as a baseline start for the department heads, okay? And then understanding that the adjustments recommended by the Collins hmm. Center were significantly yeah. higher than that, okay? Oh, yeah. But okay, rather than so say, oh, let's level fund, if we're $400,000 away from our levy limit. And we put in $93,000 worth of deficit, deficit. coverage. Yeah. Understood. So, that, I mean, that alone will not be there next year. Okay. I can guarantee so, that. So, so, so let's be reasonable here. Okay, and instead of saying let's level fun, let's say, okay, we, we're not going to bind the mouth of the kid that grinds <coughs> corn. 
let's at least say whether it's two, whether it's two and a half percent, whatever is an appropriate starting point, mm -hmm. rather than level fund, let's start there. And then if there's other adjustments that need to happen be in order to meet mm -hmm. market rate, then, then let's deal with that as we go through the budget process. But I think for tonight, Beth, and pardon me, I mean, this is just my thought, back to I was asked or we were asked about what we, we should do. When I said level fund, I didn't say that we're not going to fund more. It was that if the advisory board has to do something, they're going to do something based on that. The accountant's going to do something based on that. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking to the advisory board to come to the board of selectmen to advise the board of selectmen as to what it would be appropriate to, to move that salary structure, the whole structure, not not even getting to the Collins stuff yet, is that, in fact, we can guess tonight a number, but I would I would better have the advisory board come to the Board of Selectmen to say it's 2% or it's 3% or it's 2 and a half. That's where I'm parked. Generally speaking, when I've done budgets in the past, we tell people for budgets, for payroll, any payroll accounts, send them to us level funded we will tell you what the percentage is mm -hmm. only at an increase if you're asking for additional hours um okay or an actual and, pay and, and if that's what we're doing procedurally and then i'm okay with that i have obviously i don't know what you've done in the past year i've seen it and it works well in other towns that way you can see if someone says okay well i uh, normally i work 16 hours i'm hoping to increase to, to 19 hours yeah. For this reason and we always ask that they explain why but that way we can come back and say okay well we're offering a two percent cola for this year okay. um, or something like that the, the challenge is socially what has occurred is yes. times when we put out that we're level funding the implication oh, good, is good point. okay the yeah. implication yeah. is is that's yeah. where we're going to stay and, and no there should be no okay and there'll be a memo that chair. goes with the whole budget packet and we can include something like that right with the how to do your payroll accounts. Perfect. Okay. Just level funding and we will come back to yes. you with, with, with what, what the potential percentage increase is, is going to be. Well, I agree with what Laurie's saying. And I think we go back to what Laurie said to us yeah. earlier yeah. that we're going to have two columns. Yes. We're going to have a column that talks about just a, a cola. Yeah, cola. And we're going to have a column that's going to be Lovely. Collins related. Right. Yeah. Collins and then related. we're going to adjust. Yeah. And that truly because of our knowledge of now past year right. and your calculations mm -hmm. of even the, cal the Collins um, impact. And we're not Actually, talking it was, a it was Mary Lou's calculation. Okay, Mary Lou's calculation. Yeah. Mm. We're not talking a ton of money. No, we're not. Right. Excuse me, Lori. Uh, can I just ask you, um, based upon you know, um, the other side of having a count out with department heads and everything else, a, a formal, you know, laid it out now, do, do you, will you, will you be ready for us? And the department at that point for like a January date or this, or is that too early? I'll be ready. I plan, I'm planning on working on the budget this week yep. um, and getting because I have your spreadsheet in Excel that you did last year, so I mean it's a good base for me to start with. And then I'm just going to go through and start working on. I'll modify. I'll add the extra column as needed, um, and then I just need to start pulling apart what people spent. Um, over the last year so that way they have something to work off of um, like Tom and Jeff and I had discussed this is your spent from last year um, this was your budget from last year um, that way they can see in tr past traditionally spent so for the purposes of our meeting on Thursday night we can we can organize a proposal of here's a couple of January dates what works yes. for everyone so yep. you're ready they're ready everyone's ready yeah okay all right. Okay. So the elephant in the room. So we've had uh, discussions about February picking up the phone and calling the auditor. It appears that that's probably not possible, that we won't have Sarah's proposal until um, at least next week, if not early into January. Am I correct? Her proposal. proposal? For 19. No, her project plan for finishing 19. Yeah, for, so we, we have her proposal yeah. for the 30 days yeah, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. the. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because she's been giving us the weekly report on what's right. been going yeah, on I'm in there. Totally cool with that. So I met with Sarah um, last week, um, and we had agreed that if if this was something that she was going to full on take on, throw herself into, I gave her a hard deadline of I need to be done and ready to balance 
every month with you by the end of February in order to get okay. my free cash in certified and ready for town meeting to know what I was able to say to advisory this is what you have for free cash for the budget and she was comfortable with that yes. okay. so Great. we would be ready to start submitting things um, I would guess mid mid March okay um, when you pick up the phone for the auditor would probably be the end of March okay. uh, because they'd want to see things fully submitted into DOR whether or not that we've received feedback yet it's fine um, so long as it's in as yeah. long as it's in um, the and problem the then would be do we have money to call and say we can pay you um, that's my biggest concern yeah okay yeah, that's it. let's start scratching the money that's um, my only concern with that is I legally cannot transfer any of these funds anywhere we have an advisory board that's going to help us so you, the only way uh, the only, we don't we don't have actually yeah. have to go to a special and revote budget lines in order to transfer so you don't have money. a budget yeah. you don't have even an empty budget line for the audit because it wasn't voted as mm -hmm. part of your fiscal year 20 budget okay. I'm, I'm not a fan of having special town meetings because I think they're a waste of money. They generally end up to yeah. be like $8,000 when you're all said mm -hmm. and done. But the only way to get this line into your budget is to do that. Or we attempt to work out some sort of an arrangement with the auditor that says basically we need until the June town meeting so we can vote all of these items as fiscal year 20 articles and vote a budget line into there and vote all these transfers into that budget line yeah. which is perfectly legal yeah, you call it fiscal year 20 yep. rather than wasting the money yeah. um, and we see what kind of feedback we get yeah, from so, the auditor yeah that's the only way we can transfer them is at a town meeting yeah. so so then we've got two things that are crossing mm -hmm. we have this that we need to think about we have peter's thought related to your call center and your by bylaw mm -hmm. change yep. And so we need to understand what your timing is okay, to be able to, yeah. to get that done. I'm gonna, I'll give some calls tomorrow to committee members and we'll figure a date we, when we can get together right. and we'll discuss all of this. And if we have to have a March or April or May that we are, are doing this such that we can call an auditor in, in March and figure out how we're going to pay them. I can get at least here. reach out to him and see what his feeling would be on that. That would be a nice to know in January. Yes. Peter, yeah. Just in terms of uh, we've been talking about advisory and budgeting and so on, I'm hearing uh, no objection to if capital planning is part of that initial budget memo. Oh, absolutely not. It should be part of the initial no, thing so that all that information yeah, flows at once. Kind of instruction to department heads and committees about making the capital requests yeah. for the five years so that we can. Peter, it wasn't your turn yet. <laughs> I was bugging Steve first. It should be one stop shopping, right? We want one stop shopping. Exactly. Steve, Steve. We're going to be part of the train. Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe, but still on the train. Uh, that's fine. If that's okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to draft something and I will send it to both of you so you right. can add whatever you want as your section at the bottom of the memo. Steve, did you have a question? Sorry, Steve. Yeah, we were picking up um, Steve. I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm back to. It, you know, I'd like to go back to this email here about the treasurer and, and how it's structured, and I just had a couple of questions about that. Um, um, you know, I, 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 I see that this is a 30-day thing um, at $90, up to $90 per hour for 40 hours a week. That's $36,000, $3,600 a week, total of possibly $14,000 for a four-week shot. Um, I'm wondering if that's what are our expectations? Is this going to cost us four, fourteen thousand dollars for the next four weeks, if you will? Um, all I see is the words "begin" and "begin" and "create" and stuff like that. I don't see a lot of the things that says this is going to be done at this day. And I'm wondering, you know, so number two is, you know, what. what what sort of so at the hard, at, at the end line. at the end of this at the end of this month is when yeah. we're supposed to get the plan for what the end dates would be on the activity the that's going on assessment. right now. The, yeah. We're in the middle of the 30-day assessment, and right. and there is work occurring that is part of the reconciliation yeah. right. that is has, also part of the assessment. Yeah. Right. And she okay. has a team that she brings in with her. It's not just her alone. Yeah. 
and a formal proposal will be made for for doing this for the rest of the year. I Correct. Mean, for, for, for until uh, June 30th. I don't no, 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 no. Lori's no. already said yeah. March. No. So Sarah is strictly here to only clean up fiscal yeah. year 19 with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holly is working on fiscal year 20. Sarah has been gracious enough to Do train some training as, yeah, part Holly as, training. as part of while she's cleaning fiscal year 19. So there is a complete divide. Sarah is only working on fiscal year 19. Holly is only working on fiscal year 20. Sarah is training Holly to get her ready mm -hmm. to go. Um, I am also training Holly on fiscal year 20. Um, but there is a complete divide. When fiscal year 19 is done, um, most likely yeah. Sarah will be leaving us. Yes, she'll yes. be leaving um, us. Yeah. My goal is that hopefully we can, while Sarah's here and she, Holly's getting some training, Holly can start working on fiscal year 20's yeah. cash book. Um, I know that they briefly went over it on Friday while they were in the office together because they did call and ask if was this the way that I was hoping the cash book would be set up? Because Sarah does know yeah. Yeah. that in the end, I'm going to be here the, helping Holly with questions. Yeah. And is this the way that I typically run my cash books when I work as the treasurer? Mm -hmm. um, so we went over a lot of those kind of questions. So I know that they did sit together and go over some of those items. Um, so I'm hoping that Holly will work on fiscal year 20's cash book while Sarah's here and gain some knowledge from her. Mm -hmm. But when 19 is closed, Sarah will leave. Yeah, Sarah will leave. And Holly, Holly is starting to see a lot of her um, assistant treasurer duties were taken away from her. Yes. And so she's starting now to get back into them again. And Sarah's helping her, and also um, Laurie is a big help to her. So that brings me to sort of, I guess, another elephant in the room here. Um, um, what's, the, what, what's the plan? Um, or do we even have it? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. I need a plan, but you know, what's the plan to replace the treasurer full time with the correct person and vetting the process and, and, and things like that? And what, where are we at in that thought process? Well, I think we, the way I feel, I think we would like to get through this, you know, get, and probably Agreed. have our audit. Agreed. Okay. You know, have our yeah, audit done. I, I don't, I, I don't you know, think we're going to. I don't think we're going to get somebody you know. even to apply until no. we we are at the point well, yeah. where we can call somebody for. That's an audit. what it is. We have to be audited, and I think we have to, you know, f uh, straighten out all the problems uh, that the auditors write up in their management letter before we can really advertise for the position. Well, I, I don't well, know. Well, no, I don't. I, I don't know that we'd be able to straighten everything in the audit letter before before no. getting it out there. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's that may be a, that might be a that's full a year. Four, that's well, a four years. By, by the way, we're talking four well, years. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm having wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are, you, but, are, you, are you telling me that, that we can't, you know, chew gum and walk at the same time here? So, we, 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 are, we, are, we will be without a, a treasurer, you know, a, 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 a fully competent, certified, whatever word you want to use there, on, let's say, March 31st. No. No. no, 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 we won't be. So, personally, I would not, I would not recommend advertising right now. No. You will not have a single person walk in here and see that you just closed fiscal year eighteen without a cash book. Yeah. That you are in the middle of attempting to close fiscal year nineteen, and you're actually only in July. That you have had this horrible turnover of people. You will not have anyone apply. No. You need to get nineteen closed. You do have a very competent person in there right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, Holly's duties were taken away. Yep. I think she would be the perfect person to take the treasurer role. However, she doesn't want it. As of right now, she doesn't want it, but she is more Willing than to competent step to take. She she's more than competent to do that yes. job. Um, she has now have ac she has access to all the banks. She knows how to run checks. She's yep. been doing all of the turnovers. Um, the next thing we're going to go over is how to invest the money, which is something I'd like Sarah to show her how to do. I am perfectly capable, but again, I don't want my hands in it. Yeah, you want so that division. Between. I'm going to give them, it, it works out perfect because your former treasurer forgot to move money at yeah. Bartholomew. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give them a list of money that needs to be moved, mm -hmm. and they're going to work together next week and move mm -hmm. the money at the trust accounts. Um, 
there's multiple items that she's going to get a lot of experience doing. Um, she's seeing firsthand how to use the cash book. So I have full confidence that when Sarah leaves, that Holly will be able to do this until at least the end of this fiscal year. The other issue we have is that after funding this cleanup out of the treasurer's account, there is no more money to fund another treasurer at this time. You're paying for a massive cleanup in accounting for this fiscal year and now a cleanup in the treasurer's office. So we've depleted the reserve fund as well as any extra money we were able to find. So I'm thinking the best the best action would be to wait until at least July 1st. Yes. I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. And yes. I, 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 I understand that. What, what I'm looking for is, is this, is this, you know, um, so b before we hire a full-time treasurer or somehow mm -hmm. fill that position, um, I, I would look like to hear a commitment from the board of selectmen that you will um, um, uh, approach at least the advisory board, perhaps capital, and bring bring others into the process of of you know looking at people, interviewing, and and this this you know you know what's the, who are we looking for and and who are the, what are the qualities we're looking for and skill levels. And what are we looking for? That's and what are we looking for? That's, that's what I'm asking. Well, may, maybe in the meantime, we can, to apply, maybe we can work some more on Holly. Holly has already had, she's gone to treasurer's school for three years, and all she has to do is take her certification. With all due respect, I've heard that, heard that, and heard it. Thank you, Steve, for five years here. Thank you. Uh, all due respect, I, I, I don't buy that. Okay. All so, right. so, all right. and so, all I'm looking for is, gosh, let's let's um, you know, what's the process that we're going to go through, and 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 you know, I don't want to wake up on a Saturday morning and realize that oh, we fired someone. Okay, and 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 you know, that's where I'm going. With this. There are a, a, a number of alternatives. Yeah. Hiring any person is an, an alternative. Hiring a service is an alternative. Can we yeah. be part of that discussion? You, yeah, you've got to budget it. Excuse me? You have to budget it. <laughs> you have to be part of the, of the hiring. I would say if you're budgeting it, you're part of the process. Yeah, you, you are. Okay, okay. Aren't I you? Take, I will take your words as a, a clear yes that yes, we will be involved in the process yeah, you of will be involved. finding and replacing mm -hmm. a treasurer, whether it be a service or an individual. Yeah. And I have to say Am that. Am I hearing that correctly? Yes. Yes. And we're hoping that the uh, treasurer will come forward because um, I've been told that there was, within the 361 cities and towns here in Massachusetts, yeah. 30 have retired and they're, they're finding very they're not having very many re oh, yeah. people be, coming forward with replacements. Be, be ready for that. Yeah, you've you got to be not ready find for that. that. You're not going to find the person. There's, no, it's hard. There's, not, there's not many people applying for these jobs. No. That, that is a part of the problem. Yep. The no, one, it just, no one's applying for treasurer no. and no one's applying for accounting jobs. Strategy and, and smart thinking. Well, that's something we're going to discuss after everything is all done. Excellent. That's the uh, idea of asking Sarah to uh, be a uh, mentor, trainer beyond March and discuss on a, In other words, if I were Holly, and I, and I said, oh my God, I don't, suddenly I'm here all by myself, and I don't have Phone a friend. Ask, <laughs> or, or a paid phone a friend. Or you can help me legally. Uh, you but know, Sarah, but the, yeah. the idea of having Contractual support. Yeah. Contract. Yeah. It's part of the deal. We. Uh, that's part one. Part two is, are we paying Holly what she should be paid right now? She's taking on a tremendous yeah. amount of responsibility, mm. and she's trying to do her other jobs at the same mm. time. I presume she's not giving up the police job. No, she and hasn't. So on and. She comes up, she's been working on Fridays, and she stays a lot later than know, what she's supposed to worse. be. I mean, in a sense, yes. we're taking advantage of her 
of her terrific looking we're, we're, that, that we, we should be her. very we're very fortunate that we have her but well, she's working above her grade so so one of the things we might consider and we probably need to take a look at it and it's probably something that the personnel committee needs to review is we did something similar down at the highway department during the interim when we didn't have a highway superintendent so instead of changing the their hourly wage rate there was like a extra compensation that we had worked out at one point for some of the employees that were working above their pay grade so that way you don't get into the complexity of having changed mm. somebody's base salary it's yeah. kind of like what's in the police mm -hmm. contract if someone's the acting chief yeah. they get x number of extra dollars in a day or a week mm -hmm. or whatever however it's structured yeah. Yeah. so i think that's something yes. that that probably mm -hmm. oh, you. if yeah. we could you, refer you that back enough? to personnel mm -hmm. committee and see if there's something appropriate that at, during that period of time that okay it's on her list now it's on your yeah. list it's great on my list. I'm, I'm taking two away tonight how many are you yeah. taking yeah yeah um, we consider Structuring some of that as a retention bonus to be paid to a certain <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're putting a lot of load yeah. on her shoulders, yeah. and I, from what I understand, she can probably handle it. But if she's building up skills, and if a nicer offer comes along, she may take it. No. And we may want to give her a. No, I don't think so. Okay. Holly's. I don't know Holly's. No, <laughs> Holly's. Holly's been here, I'd say, close to 20 years. I don't think she's going to leave. We probably ought to defer these conversations. Yeah. You're, you're, you're moving into yeah. HR stuff, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are. Well, no. the, the, I, I, I think the. Hmm? It's a, it's a public discussion for the, for the compensation, though. So. No, it's not necessary. Holly's not going to leave us. If, if I, I like to bring up a different topic Careful. Um, around the schedule for bringing in a full full title treasurer. I know that I hear a lot of, well, we can't do it yet. I would like to see something, some outline of a plan that would say, okay, we're going to have the job description by this date. Uh, we have the job okay, description and, already. And, 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 Thank you. And then going on, the idea is saying, okay, we've got the audit coming up. We think the audit's going to be here, and then we're going to get the audit report here. And just saying, okay, I heard some people saying, well, we can't bring them in until the audit's done. We can't bring them in until we fix all the issues that the auditors brought up. We can't bring them in until July 1st when we have funding in fiscal year 2021. I hear a lot of constraints. And I would like to understand. I'd like to have some understanding of what those concerns are and how we're going to work together in order to get a full treasure, fully full treasure this. in here as soon as reasonably possible under those constraints, and not find ourselves in the middle of June going, "Oh yeah, I guess we should put that posting out." So Lori gave us some information, yes. and let's reiterate what Lori's information is because it's good because it's a couple couple of posts in the sand. I would hope that they'd be a little firmer ground than sand, but let's have some posts in the ground. Yep. Posts in the ground, March-ish, March you're going to pick up the phone yep. and you're going to call an auditor. Mm -hmm. yep. That auditor is probably going to be through June at least, at least yes. if not into July. Mm -hmm. yep. So in, in a time of sometime around July 1, we want to have a strategy. And again, it, won't, it will be a strategy. It's not going to be we're going to go hire somebody or we're going to go hire a service. It'll be a strategy of maybe a blend of that, a blend of yes. local resources mm -hmm. that might be available to us or not, if we are careful, that that person might in fact be available to us. And we then work between the accountant's office, the current, that current treasurer's office, the advisory, and the, this board to determine July-ish on as to what we're going to do for having a full-time treasury, treasury right. operation yeah. in yeah. place. Clarence, I, I think actually, though, we need to try to set as a goal, potentially, of May 1 to have made the decision about whether we're hiring or going after a service, because oh, we are going to have to That's a good it. thought. Okay. So I, I get what you're saying, and, and I would concur yeah. that the execution of that is probably going to start on or about July 1st. Yeah. But I think we need to have our strategy in place by May 1st to say, do, do we need to fund a service or are we going to be going out to hire? There's right. potential to continue on with Sarah. She does do services in yeah. other right. towns. So it would be a matter of getting a proposal with her for 
an actual monthly yeah. service that doesn't include cleaning up. It would just right. be the regular the maintenance. service. Right. Right. Um, so. There's other companies as well. I know I provided you with at least one other company. Right. Um, but the problem is there's just not many of those types of yeah. services around, not for treasurers. Right. So Because Sarah is right now, I mean, she does other towns, but Sarah is the West Brookfield's treasurer right so now. So speaking of putting the advisory committee yeah. back to work, <laughs> thinking about those services yeah. mm -hmm. that would be something that we could between now and then yeah. because I think Steve you had a couple of names as well and I'm not sure if they're the same names yeah, that I think Lori Sarah had. Was. One, one, but one was independent of Sarah, correct? Okay, so, so same, same ones I did give you though. Yes, yeah. so between now and maybe March mm -hmm. that maybe there could be some conversation with those different Let's entities yeah. to understand the pricing and again that would be something that the advisory board could uh, advise the board of selectmen as to those different alternatives because qu quite frankly where i'm parked is we may have a local resource and we may definitely need a service yeah. or a combination of both and so having maybe from march to may yeah. yep. Yep. what is advisory advising us <laughs> as far as that kind of resource Right, seeing if, what the service costs and if they'd even have someone available yeah. 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 come July 1st. If, if you'll give yeah. me the other name of that other person, I can start investigating sure. in a number and I'll start investigating yep. with this new person. And then maybe this week when Laurie's here, maybe I can come up and see Laurie and we'll talk, we'll talk, maybe see if she would come in as a service and get a, and get a price from her, what it would cost per year. So Tom, did that address your question? Um, I think it, it, yes, it, it did address it that we're going to have to wait until the audit finishes and then it, we're going to figure out. No, 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 no by, that by May 1st no. we'll at least yeah. ha have, a, have, a, have an idea of what the plan will be, whether we'd be going like with, with treasure, direct hire, treasure, service, or some hybrid of, of the two, at least what our proposed strategy is, right? With some assistance and support from the advisory committee regarding you know pr potentially doing some of the the reach out and and some of the options so that we can we can make a an appropriate have an appropriate discussion around making that decision on or about the first of may and that we would budget mm -hmm. is part of the 2021 fiscal year yeah. budgeting but that we would not we would wait until the audit results come in before we started um looking like, yeah. before we started any searches Yes, it, particularly if we particularly if we go with the direct hire option. So mm -hmm. either either in regardless of whether we were going with an uh, some sort of a service or whether we were going with direct hire, we really don't have any budget for anything other than clean up and to limp along under the mm -hmm. the good auspices of, of of Holly through the end of the year. Quite frankly, um, and even if Sarah, you know, if Sarah does we sent her on her way in March and we keep Holly on and just until June no one ever I mean, no treasurer or no accountant is ever left like high and dry these the groups that we both belong to are full of resources and other treasurers um, I mean I luck out and I have my own group of people that I bounce questions off of but the Treasurer's Association they do you can send an email yeah. oh, and sure. they're full of people who phone will answer your question that phone a friend <laughs> I help treasurers just because, you know, it's the nice thing to do. I had a treasurer that started in Barry and she had questions and why not help them? It's perfectly acceptable. All, all the different, um, all of the different, like your tax collector, your town clerks, everybody, that's, there's, you know, many out there and everybody is always willing to answer and help you. They'll come out and help. You've got to be willing to ask the question and oh, follow yeah. the advice. But you got, yes. You, you just sent. You just sent. They have an email system set up. You send out your and questions. And it just sends a mass email. It sends them out to all of them, and you'll get all these questions answered. Ken had something. Ken. I've known Holly for a long time. She's very dependable. Has she been offered the money that the past treasurer was getting? I think we, what did you notice, say something about eighteen thousand dollars or something has been spent on that budget that we had appropriated. I think yes. what's appropriate, Ken, is that um, uh, well, Linda's gonna have a conversation and I think we mm -hmm. should de defer that yeah. question to the personnel board yeah. for the moment. I think that it's not an appropriate setting tonight yeah. to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. 
Matt, if you have a man speak. Yes. I just from what I'm listening and following and, and I've known what's been going on for the last four, five, six years. I really don't think we can wait five, six, seven, eight months to get a full time treasurer here. I think we're gonna fall back in the same hole again if we don't get somebody on board before that time period. That's we understand that, Dave, but just like like we were trying to say before, there's so many that are out there retiring and nobody's applying for these jobs. That's what the pro that's the problem. And and I think that the advisory board doing a, a review and study yeah. of the different alternatives yeah. and especially Lori providing a number of those alternatives will help yeah. us at least start on a path of developing that strategy That's where we're, we're talking yeah. a, a May time frame so we're probably talking five months to then being able to execute on a strategy yeah. uh, Maureen had a question. who had a question Peter no Steve Maureen, Maureen did Maureen, Maureen did <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, I'm all done. Thank you very much. Okay. I think we're very fortunate that we had Laurie to help us through yes. the initial impact. And then Sarah to help us through this next step. And I hope I say this correctly. Is someone going to guide the select board on what we sh they should be looking for or not looking for? On a weekly, daily, monthly, quarterly, so we never fall into this. On this again, we I think we could probably ask Sarah if she would help us out, and I'm sure Laurie will too. So and part of it is actually adhering to the our own policy and procedure handbook and getting this out fielded because some of the some of the fundamental things that we should have been checking and should have been validating and should have been holding the two offices accountable for are contained within that policy and procedure handbook. Mm -hmm. The fundamental one that appears in like page six of the treasurer collector handbook and it is clearly in this policy and procedure book is one that maintenance of a cash book and the reconciliation between the treasurer's cash book and the accounts uh, uh, accounting records or general ledger okay. general ledger yeah. sorry that's okay <laughs> i know the term and it, and it just escaped right. me at the moment okay right. fundamentally we we have not we had not been as a board enforcing a written validation of where we were against our revenue yeah. posting again and against our reconciliation between the cash book and the general ledger okay fundamentally if that's happening on a monthly basis or not less than a quarterly basis I mean if you slip a month but then catch it up within the quarter it's not the end of the world right but but if it's happening less than quarterly we're already in trouble Right, right, fundamentally, I don't want to see that happen. And, right. Yeah, so, no, so that's none of so, us want to see that right. happen. So, so, so fundamentally, if we're checking those three things in essence, then at least we're we're probably going to be ready for the end of the year. And I may be missing something, but but those are the those are the big rocks. If those big rocks are happening, if the turnovers are happening and getting recorded real time, then then really you're in a position where foundationally we'd be able to file our paperwork at the end of the year. Right. So like I said at a prior meeting, going along with that policy, these should all be signed and read. The dollar amount should be read at a selectman's meeting monthly. Mm -hmm. Everyone should be able to see that the collector, the accountant, the treasurer all signed. Yeah. We're all balanced. This is the month we're balanced to. You can all read it. We've implemented in other towns, especially towns that had a midst of chaos where the public wanted to know what was going on, can't make the selectmen's meetings. Um, we had implemented on not only the Facebook pages, but the town website posting of what they call just quick department reports, monthly department reports, the treasurer, the accountant, the collector, and the assessor, we all wrote up quick blurbs, mm -hmm. and they got where posted you were yeah. where you're at for the month, um, and we put up um, monthly expenditure reports. They are public information. I'd put them up online. I, whoever knows how to use the website, I would give it to them and they would do it. Um, and it would go on the Facebook page. And that's what we've been doing in other towns. It was well received, especially after cash mishaps. Yep. Um, that was something I was going to suggest. Yep. That's what you're saying. Monthly reports yep. should be coming out to all yep. of us. They should. And they mm -hmm. should be read here. They should be posted for anyone in town mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Peter. Peter. Just going back to the budget package, we've concentrated almost entirely on uh, 
expenditure budgets. We have never, as a town, had revenue projections. Um, and I wonder if we could begin that process this year where we're asking department heads <coughs> to submit revenue projections as well as expense projections. So some way or other, so that we begin to we begin to have goals, measurable cool. goals. They're goals. They're not. Yeah. They're not. You know, uh, stick it to you. You know, uh, you know, get where you hope to get yeah. to. But still, it's beginning to have a revenue picture as part of the budget picture. So revenue projections are done. Um, sort of. I kind of go off what advisory does in their budget, and then when we do the tax recap. I also do, I have to do revenue projections for that current year. So I've done my own revenue projections for fiscal year 20. They were pretty similar to what advisory did. Um, I also have to take into account that we receive a debt payment from Tantasqua. Um, and I'm pretty much in line with what advisory had put in the budget for this year. Um, asking the departments to give their revenue projections, you'd be asking them to only project what would be revenues for general fund only, not for anything that's coming in. So like EMS would can't project anything that's gonna hit their receipt reserve fund because we can't use any of that money. Um, then you'd have to, we also take into account what we're getting for motor vehicle excise, what we're getting for personal property, real estate. Um, generally the way we do revenue projections is you base them off of last year's amounts. We try to stay no more than 90% of what we projected or what we received from the prior year. Um, for this year, because I'm not confident that all of the revenues were captured, I'm fairly confident we got most of them. I, I think we really want to stay around 90% and asking people to do them, I think is just one more step that if they've never been asked before, um, I'm not sure it's the best time to start asking. There's one. There's one. Go. <laughs> well, I yield. <laughs> the revenue generating department, one of the new recommended policies is that to ask revenue generating departments to review their their fees. We have not, many of the departments have not changed the fees in years, yeah, yeah. Um, dozen years, and yeah. therefore we're we're shooting ourselves in the foot in terms of our ability to generate free cash or local receipts and and, and then free cash. Um, so it seems to me we have to have some guidance to our department heads you know, to ask and to conduct a review of fees. Uh, well, they should definitely be looking at their fees. I've suggested already that the trailer park fees not only need to be reviewed, but they need to be increased. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few other fees that have been brought up that need to be reviewed and increased. So can that go in this letter that you're sending out? Yes. There you go. Yep. So so they it's part of the annual budgeting process. They yeah. should be reviewing their fees. Yes, just their basic fee schedule of what but they're doing. Some of the fees, don't they have to be, they have to go before town meeting? Before they're, they no, we don't have any bylaw that requires us to well, take fees to town meeting. Well, I know, I know when I took over as town clerk years ago, it was right in, um, it was right in the description of the job with Mass General Law. It said I had to go before town meeting to um, okay. have my fees up. The, the, let's, so let's understand our fees. Yep. And let's understand the process yep. to increase. If I thought we, we explored that though with the building inspector change in well, fees with Copeland and Page, and well, there was I know no requirement I had to, get to town do meeting that. approval before there, I could do anything with okay. the fees. Okay, the referee is going to work here. Okay. There could be some that move in that direction. There could be yeah. some others that, because of Mass General Law, possibly yeah. that you'd have to do. But I think the asking of the question is an appropriate yeah. thing. Oh, absolutely. And, the, and then if there's a process change yeah. that we need to town meeting, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No to town meeting, but we can change. And when we change the the driveway uh, opening thing there, and we got that done yep. a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. and that, that had was, to be sent for approval to the attorney general, wasn't it? No. 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 no it had, we, we didn't wind up needing a bylaw at all in order to do yeah. it. It was just an adjustment well, and publication of the fee schedule. Well, I know when a few schedule. years ago when we went up on, um, when the tax collector would send out her demands, we had to that, get town approval for that. That is town approval. Yeah. Anything that goes to the tax collector's office yep. does require town, town approval. approval. But these fees, town clerk, trailer park, none of those are governed by the tax collector. No. Yeah. So again, no, asking right. the question is the mm -hmm. appropriate yeah. thing. If there's a process thing, we turn it back to yeah. them to do that. But the other uh, 
we had the CBGB team, whatever. Yep. CDBG. That, that meeting <laughs> last week. There we go. Alphabet. And so there was there was a. I had to leave early, so I, I could not say the whole to the end. But there there is a, a possibility of moving forward with additional efforts in that area, as far as and, and as well as twenty seven thousand dollars that we may be able to use in FY eighteen or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But the point, the point I'm making is that we should uh, make sure Kathy is working with your yeah. your group as far as those. I mean, she had a nice report that, there that we had yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, as far as what's possible and whatnot. So again, that's revenue generating, and so we ought to make sure we understand that as well as the CBDG uh, potential mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah. So again. That, that's a conversation as well as Cindy in the highway and all that she does is maybe if it, within that budget we can understand her thoughts. If I could through the Board of Selectmen and Steve and the Advisory Committee, would they make a review of revenue and fees part of their budget review? That would be a good... Yeah. I think that's appropriate. It's yeah. going to be in Lori's letter running by. Yeah. And I think that the departments themselves, they should probably put some feelers out and see what other towns are getting for their fees. Because a lot of them are the same for you. I, 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 will, I will say this. It, 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 these are, we're asking the same questions. I, I guess we've sort of felt like, a, um, almost like what you said. It, it's, it's, we have found that either the departments don't know or it's approximate, and, and it's certainly nothing they've been asked in the past. Uh, we're asking, we, we, we and I guess, Peter, sure, we can formalize it. Um, right. I don't know how far it goes to this year, but yeah, it, it's it's of interest to us, and particularly a couple of key people on our journey. Sure. Thank you. I want to thank Lori for her yeah. report. Yes. I know. Lori, and I want to thank Lori for all the work that she's done with us, and she's been working with hey, the department. Okay. Well, she's been very you know, cooperative. Can, can, I, can I just say thank you to Linda, Clarence, Beth, Lori. Um, I just think you really moved quickly uh, uh, when we needed to move quickly and uh, found, you know, uh, an organization that can step in. And, uh, you know, I think you you helped present some real damage to particular personnel around here and all. And um, yeah, we've got more work to do, but I, I just think it was, it was uh, made me feel good um, about you know all the changes that happened in a very short amount of time. So um, here, here, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. The agenda is complete. We're all complete, and we. I would like a motion to resign at uh, to adjourn. <laughs> 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 to, to adjourn at eight nineteen. You have that motion. Second. Aye.